dry winter months of 1982, a baby was born on a farm not far from here. Magically, that night, it started to rain. And the Tswana people there called her Pulani, for she was a girl born in the rain. Sadly, though, it was one of the few times it would rain on that farm the next 10 years. She was a happy child, but her anxiety grew as the clouds came and go, and the crops died at knee height year after year. Pulani was eight years old when her family had to sell everything except a small piece of land and an old tractor. Her heart was broken. It hurt badly when she realized the neighbors were just waiting for them to sell the last piece and leave, because such a small piece of land, they said, is not viable as a farm. Being the stubborn person that she is, though, she went to study horticulture to learn about soil and plants and water. She worked and traveled everywhere looking for solutions to make a little land and water go a long way. I am Pulani, and I am still obsessed with rain. Yes, my little farm still suffers from drought every few years, but I have a fish pond now. There is spinach in my fish pond, and basil and cabbage and tomatoes. What I am talking about is aquaponics, the combination of hydroponics, which is the growing of plants in water, and aquaculture, which is the raising and growing of fish. The system works like this. Fish live in a pond where they feed and produce waste containing ammonia. As ammonia becomes toxic at high levels, the water is pumped out into a second container where vegetables grow either in water or a gravel bed media. In this water, there is bacteria that turns this ammonia waste into liquid nitrate fertilizer. This fertilizer is then taken up by the vegetable roots, which makes it grow lush, and the clean water trickles back into the fish pond, taking oxygen with it for the fish. Don't you think this is a brilliant system? It recycles water over and over, using almost less than 90% of water than what conventional crop production does. It turns waste into nutrients. Yes, aquaponics has been around for a while. Not sure if you know, but the first very basic concept was actually developed by the Aztecs. The modern version has been refined since 1979. It has also been the topic of a few TED Talks. So why then did I put myself through the stressful days and sleepless nights to bring you another talk about it? Because I believe this is the brilliant solution to two of the most critical issues that Southern Africans are facing today. That is, food insecurity and climate change. Today, in the Southern African countries, there are 29 million food insecure people. That is what statistics say. Food security has been defined as having financial and physical access to food. Then, to complex the matter, the food must be nutritious and also culturally appropriate. Yes, this theory appeals to the academic in me. But as a human, I know that our basic need is food and water. And that when we are worried where the next meal or next month's meals will be coming from, we are food insecure. To me, there are many more food insecure people in this world than what statistic knows about. Then, this situation is further aggravated by climate change. It's really hot today, isn't it? 
The predictions are that the Southern African region will become much warmer and drier than it is at the moment. Rainfall periods will be shorter, but when it rains, it will come with great intensity, resulting in floods. I know there are some skeptical people about climate change, but I have experienced this for myself. Last year, it started to rain for the first time on the 1st of January. It came down in massive storms. It stopped on the 31st of March. A record 800 millimeters for that world in less than three months. This is an uncomfortable reality, and we must be prepared for it. A great way to prepare is to make sure that when it rains, we capture every drop and then use it to its maximum potential. Which brings me to the great opportunity that we have for rainwater harvesting. Let me explain. The city of Johannesburg has an average annual rainfall of 600 millimeters. Did you know that a roof as small as 36 square meters can collect almost 20,000 liters of water. When this water tank is connected to an aquaponic system, a house becomes a farm. A small aquaponics unit with a 1,000 liter fish tank has the ability to produce 30 kilograms of fish, 54 kilograms of tomatoes, and 360 heads of lettuce. How much more, then, can be done with a 20,000-liter rainwater tank? I must admit, though, that when I saw my first aquaponic system, I was excited, but also a little freaked out. To me, it looked like something that can only be operated by technologically savvy people with lots of money. Don't know about you, but I freak out when I see cables and buttons, and it gets worse when I have to read a stack of manuals to make something work. I was wrong, though. With my limited abilities and equally limited budget, I managed to build my own aquaponic system. I used a rainwater tank connected to our roof, for the system itself, I used plastic containers, a water feature pump, yes, and even an old bathtub. I must admit, it's not the sexiest system out there, and uh, it will probably never be featured on the cover of New Scientist magazine. But it works, and it cost me less than 2,000 rand. In a similar way, we can teach people to apply these principles. So, how do we go about empowering people then to build this system for themselves? How do we tell people to embrace a tank full of rainwater as a great gift instead of letting it run away into the ever-elaborate stormwater systems? Two ways. Firstly, we take it to schools. The mind of a child is a magical world full of possibility, very much like fertile soil. Just imagine if every school has an aquaponic system the way they have computer centers. How cool it will be for kids to learn about maths and science and biology. We can, they can you do it using the basis of the aquaponic system. It can start simply with great ones having a fish bowl with a few heads of lettuce on top of it, progressing all the way to grade 12 where they build intricate systems for themselves. I say, they will either go home and tell their parents to build them these systems, or they will do it themselves. Secondly, new housing developments should be designed with rainwater harvesting in mind instead of over-designing these stormwater systems. How cool it will be to move into a new house already equipped with an aquaponics unit the same way they fit them with doors and windows. 
In a similar way, apartment buildings and shopping complexes can have rainwater harvesting systems connected to a central aquaponics unit, taking care of the people who live and work in these buildings. That way, then, we will become food-empowered and not worry so much about what is available on the supermarket shelves. That is, if you can afford it. Yes, massive change often starts with small beginnings. It started with Wangari Matai, who founded the Green Belt Movement in Kenya in 1977. Since then, they planted over 51 million trees. Aquaponics as a way for us to become a food secure nation starts with you and me. It starts with egg trays and empty food containers. It becomes the cool thing to do when we build them ourselves and we talk about it with our friends and where we work. And it will reach this massive tipping point that I am hoping for when each school and community center is equipped with an aquaponics unit. Then, before we know it, we may also have 51 million units nourishing the people who take care of them. So, I hope that in a year or two that I will run into you. Please, stop me then and tell me that there is spinach in your fish pond too.